In this task, you will add the data set containing the refugee and IDP population information. So I'm going to add the UNHCR assisted IDPs and refugees by country.shapefile to the map by clicking the Add Vector Layer button, clicking Browse, and selecting it in the uh, Open dialog, clicking Open and OK. And this data set contains two attributes of interest. One is going to be refugees, and that's the number of refugees living within the country, and IDPs, which are the number of internally displaced persons living within the country. So let's take a look at the descriptive statistics of the refugee field to get a feel for its form. So we're going to click Vector, Analysis Tools, Basic Statistics. And this is going to open the Basic Statistics dialog. We're going to use this dialog to run basic descriptive statistics in the refugee field. So we're going to set the following options in the basic statistics dialog. And then we're going to click OK to see the results shown. So for the input vector layer, I'm going to choose UNHCR assisted IDPs and refugees by country. And for the target field, we're going to choose refugees, which is probably going to be down at the bottom second from the last. I'll then click OK. So reviewing the statistics, take note of the mean, standard deviation, min, max, and median. Because the median is significantly lower than the mean, that tells us that the data is negatively skewed. The standard deviation seems reasonable, if not a little large. Finally, notice that the min value is negative 99. In this field, negative 99 represents a country with no data, which can also be thought of as null. Since negative 99 is a numeric value, it is being included in the basic statistics and is skewing our data. Additionally, the max value is more than nine times the standard deviation. This makes the maximum value seem like a prime candidate for being an outlier that we should handle separately. <clears throat> so go ahead and click close to close the basic statistics. And let's open up the attribute table for the uh, IDP and refugee layer. And we're going to sort the refugee field in descending order. <clears throat> so I'm going to scroll over. I'm going to click on the refugee column title until I have a down arrow. <clears throat> and so if we look at this first one, so this is the really, really large population. If I scroll over to the left, we can find the country name, and we can see that it's Pakistan. And so Pakistan is the country with the largest refugee population. And since it's so much larger than the rest of the data, we're going to treat it separately for classification and statistic purposes. Additionally, if I do the sort from smallest to largest, we can see that the negative 99 values uh, simply refer to no data. And so we're going to exclude those as well since they're messing with our statistics and they should not be included in the classification. So to do that, I'm going to close the attribute table. I'm going to right click on the assisted IDPs and refugees layer and I'm going to choose filter. This opens a query builder dialog. So in here, I'm going to uh, enter the following expression to exclude Pakistan, Pakistan and negative 99 values. So I want admin, which is going to be uh, going to hold the name of the country, is not equal to, and I'm going to say all values because I don't like to type it in in case I make a typo. And I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to choose Pakistan. I double click on it, and I also want to include, or I'm sorry, exclude where refugees is not equal to negative 99. So by excluding Pakistan and negative 99 records, this will help me get better statistics and a more meaningful classification. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to rerun the basic statistics. So again, I'm going to click Vector. Analysis Tools, oops, Basic Statistics, on the UNHCR layer, on the Refugees attribute. I'm going to click OK. So now I review the basic statistics again. Note that they have changed quite significantly. The in value reduced from 177 to 151, which means that 26 countries were filtered out. While the mean stayed roughly the same, the medium increased by 1,569 and the standard deviation decreased by 38,891. 
These set of statistics give us a better understanding of the nature of the data and will help guide us when classifying the data. So let's classify the refugee data now. So I'm going to click close to close my basic statistics. And I'm going to open the style properties for the UNHCR layer by double clicking on it. I'm going to make sure the style tab is selected. I'm going to set the following style properties. So for the classification type, instead of single symbol, I'm going to choose graduated. For the column, I'm going to choose refugees. There we go. For the symbol, I'm going to check click the change button. I'm going to click on simple fill and I want the border width to be 0.3. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to make sure we have five classes chosen and for the color ramp I'm going to choose the greens and for the mode I'm going to choose natural breaks. With all of that set I'm going to click the classify button and that's going to classify all the data for me. I'm now going to click OK to style the map. And so notice that there's quite a bit of white on the map and that it's a bit overpowering. Additionally, Pakistan and the negative 99 countries are still missing. So let's reintroduce and symbolize the missing countries while removing the white class. So I'm going to clear the filter for the UNHCR layer. So I'm going to do that by right clicking on it, clicking on filter, and deleting the filter and then pressing OK. I'm going to open the style properties for the UNHCR layer. And so since the uh, first two classes only range from 2 to 123,485, uh, which is within the first standard deviation, I'm going to combine those two classes and reuse the lowest class for the negative 99 countries. So I'm going to double click on the values for the lowest class. And I'm going to uh, do that to edit the class bounds. So I'm going to set the lower value and upper value both to negative 99. And that means that this class will only uh, represent values of negative 99. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to double click on the next uh, or the second lowest class to edit it. I'm going to set the lower value to 2, which is what the lower value of the previous class used to be. I'm going to click OK. So now I'm going to symbolize the negative 99 data as a gray color so it looks different from the refugee data. A different hue represents a different type of thing and no data is different from data. So I'm going to double click on the symbol for the negative 99 class. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to set the following properties. For simple fill, I'm going to set the fill color to a hue of 223 a saturation of 28 and a value of 163. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to change the border width to 0.3. It's, it's already there. That way we're consistent with the other borders. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click Add Class to add a new class to the style and this is going to represent Pakistan. So I'm going to change the lower value and the upper value of the class so by double clicking on it to the number of refugees in Pakistan which is 162,000 I'm sorry 1,621,000 uh, 1,525 so let me make that for the uh, for the upper as well there we go I'm going to click OK and let's symbolize the Pakistan country as a maroon color so it looks different from the refugee data that we uh, and we can also draw attention to the fact that Pakistan is a little different. So I'm going to double click on the symbol representing Pakistan. I'm going to set the following symbol properties. So for the simple fill fill color I'm going to set a hue of 4, a saturation of 255 and a value of 100. I'm going to click OK Make sure the border width is consistent at 0.3. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click OK again to apply the style to the map. Okay, so now let's reopen the style properties for the UNHCR layer. And so let's review the classification as it stands now. I'd like to make three observations. One, the labels do not reflect the classifications anymore. There are overlapping class boundaries 
So for instance, which class does uh, 301,068 belong in? Is it this class or this class? The class boundaries represent no gaps between the classes. Let's address all three observations by A, changing the class boundaries to represent actual minimum and maximum values, B, updating the labels to represent the new class boundaries. By sorting the refugee column values in the attribute table, we could see that the lower boundaries for the top three classes are all wrong. So for instance, 123,485 and 301,068 do not exist, and 613,104 is the upper boundary for the previous class. So let's change them. So set the lower boundary values for the top three classes so that the classes are, uh, are the same as I'm going to show you now. And so for this class here, we are going to set the lower value to 149709. For the next highest class, we're going to set the lower boundary to 407646. And for the highest class, there's only one value in that class, and so the upper and the lower are going to be the same, which is 862790. And so now the class boundaries represent actual values in the data set. So now that all the classes are set, we should update the label field to reflect the changes we made. So set the following label values. And what we're essentially going to do is remove the decimal numbers, add thousand separators, change change 99, negative 99 to no data, and identify Pakistan and Iran by name since they are in classes all by themselves and they're the highest values. So that, that, so that way if they're countries of interest they're easy to identify. And I'm going to do that now and show you the result. So to change a label value you double click on the label and then you just type in what you want. So for instance here I want no data for the negative 99 values. For Pakistan I'm going to put 1 comma 621,5225. I'm going to put Pakistan in parentheses. And I'm going to work my way all the way down. And here you can see the final product of the modified labels.